Hello, how are you going? My name's Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at Latte Panda vs Raspberry Pi. Now it's a topic that's been gaining a bit of traction, I thought it was time that we address, uh, take these guys head to head and address some of the differences uh, with a bit more detail. Now everyone knows Raspberry Pi, if you're watching this video I'm sure the name Raspberry Pi has, uh, you know, has been mentioned to you at least once or twice. And simply put, it is the world's most popular microcomputer. It's a single board computer and has everything you need to run a fully fledged desktop version of Linux or other distributions. Uh, it's great. We love it, makers love it, and it's awesome. But there's a new guy on the block called the Latte Panda, which is another single board computer. There's quite a lot coming out now. But what makes the Latte Panda so interesting is it has an onboard Arduino chip. Not only that, but it is capable of running the full version of Windows 10, the full, fully fledged desktop version. And it packs quite a punch. It's got a 1.8 gigahertz uh, Atom uh, Cherry Trail processor, I believe. Um, and you can get it in two and four gigabyte uh, memory variants. So there's quite a lot going under here compared to the 1.2 gigahertz, one gig uh, Raspberry Pi. And it can run the Windows 10 IOC core, but really, it's not like Windows 10, it's a developer um, bare bones IOT edition designed for you know terminal usage and things like that. It's great, don't get me wrong, but it's not desktop Windows 10 as you know it, which is what the Latte Panda brings. Now, first of all, it's a little unfair to directly compare these two boards because they are so different. You've got one running ARM Cortex uh, architecture, one running Intel Atom uh, architecture. You've got two different price points as well. The Latte Panda is designed for makers. It is affordable, whereas the Latte Panda is a little bit more expensive, but you do get what you pay for. Um, and again, the operating systems are so different. You can put Windows apps on it. You can put games. You can put anything you would have on a traditional computer, whereas with Raspberry Pi, it's a little bit different. It's a Linux distribution, which if you're not familiar with it, can take a little bit of getting used to. So let's take a look at simply, with, with that in mind, of course, let's take a look at some of the specs uh, that these boards are packing, number of peripherals, and you know the data that they can crunch. So the Latte Panda brings to the table, as I was saying, a 1.8 gigahertz uh, quad core. Quad core Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor, two and four gigabyte RAM variants. Uh, it's got 32 gigs and 64 gigs, depending on which model you go with, of onboard storage. A very important note, because the Raspberry Pi has no onboard storage. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, it has, as you would expect, USB 2, USB 3, very important, HDMI, um, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of the, the usual uh, you know, culprits you'd find on single board computers these days. But it also has uh, the LCD display and the touch, the touch connections, which is something the Raspberry Pi lacks, along with these headers here for Arduino, uh, the Arduino board. It's an 80 mega 32U4 chip on board. You can see here this board's uh, co-produced with DF Robot, and DF Robot uh, have a lot of sensor modules which use three-wire interfaces for analog and digital sensors, and you can see those are uh, those headers ready to go here. Now, it does also have a smaller header to make sure you don't accidentally connect to it, uh, which you can use the GPIO pins on the Intel processor for if you want to go directly to the heart of what's powering your computer. More complex to use, certainly a lot more to them than the Arduino, but the options there, if you want that fantastic device for putting on, you know, quadcopters and uh, GPS uh, navigators, things that will crunch a lot of data and use a lot of math functions. So the Raspberry Pi, you probably know all about the Raspberry Pi. If not, check out our What is Raspberry Pi tutorial. But for a quick overview, as we're saying, it has a quad core 1.2 gigahertz um, Cortex processor with the Broadcom SOC there. It's got one gigabyte of RAM, which is shared across the CPU and GPU cores. Uh, you've got micro SD card only for the storage, which is important. Micro SD card slot, uh, slots just there. And it has no onboard storage. So if you take the SD card out of one Raspberry Pi, put it into another, it's like it was the same machine. Any overclock settings, any config settings, uh, any programs, it's all read off the SD card, which is cool. It's Linux, and it also has, it's only got USB 2, but it also features uh, Ethernet, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, a CSI connector for camera serial interfaces, LCD, uh, and the GPIO pins. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, which one is gonna be best for your, uh, you know, your project, your application? Well, it depends. It really does depend. Do you want to use Linux? Do you want to use Terminal? Do you want to get used to all of the, nuance, the nuances that make up Linux? If so, the Raspberry Pi is going to be great. 
If on the other hand, you love Arduino and you also love the idea of a computer that can fit into your pocket, then the Latte Pan is the go-to. It's dead easy to set up. Bear in mind though that the Latte Pan does no longer come with a product key for Windows 10. They do come pre-installed with Windows 10 though, uh, which means you can use the non-activated version, pretty much has all the same features, a couple of slight roadblocks which haven't really bothered us yet, but the Arduino is so easy to use, you just open up the pre-installed IDE, uh, select the Leonardo board, and you've got programming. Onboard uh, LED, all the rest you'd expect from an Arduino board, and it makes using GPIO pins so much easier, because with the Raspberry Pi, you can't directly access those pins like you can with an Arduino chip. It's so easy to write directly to registers with uh, Atmel chips, but with the Raspberry Pi, you have to sift through these software layers in order to write to them uh, in Python code or terminal, whatever it may be. So I guess they're the key differences and you can check out some of the board, um, you know, the board layouts and what, what they each have going for them. But it really just depends what you're comfortable with and whether you consider the price point of the Latte Panda being worth the extra features. Um, for example, it has Wi-Fi antenna um, connectors so you can really boost that range, whereas the Pi doesn't. It's got all these different things going for it. Um, both have headphone jacks, uh, for example, but whether you whether you think that onboard Arduino is going to make your life a whole lot easier, say than having an extra board, or whether you want to get down with Linux, it's up to you. That's a bit of a head-to-head, -head. again, a little unfair because of the differences in architecture, operating system, uh, specs, you know, the Latte Panda may have more power, but it needs that to power the extra juice that Windows 10 requires, whereas Linux is a much simpler, uh, low power distribution that is still quite capable, so, yeah bit of give and take. Decide for yourself. Uh, you can pick one up at our store. Uh, I'd love to see some awesome projects with the Latte Panda, especially. We haven't seen too many of those being such a new board. So if you're if you're loving it, get the conversation started in the comments below. Um, I'm Sam. You're watching another Core Electronics tutorial, and I'll see you next time, guys.